the teacher would just assume that the kids didn't care, most of the kids. So then I'm like, just forget it, you know, like, just whatever. A lot of violence. Cops fighting teenagers, teenagers fighting teachers. I was cutting cops a lot, because it was so easy to cut fast. I was thinking to myself, I'm tired of failing. I don't want to be a failure. I want to be like everyone else, smart. We wanted to get a population of students engaged that was really slipping outside the system. All of our students are very high risk of high school dropout. We believe that there's a connection between physical health and mental health, and therefore academic success. So every kid who comes into our school gets put on a single gender team. This is not a varsity kind of arrangement where the top 10 or 12 players make the team and everybody else can watch. They go and they play sports for two and a half to three hours, every kid, every day. Teams inherently rely on each other, teams inherently sacrifice for each other, and I thought that that was a really powerful mechanism for helping kids engage in school. Working with the kids here and the commute here in the entire area is kind of like almost culture shock. This is actually the first time I've ever been in bed I've never spent any time in Brooklyn. Hey, Sid. Let's go. Let's go. You got shorts on. I see you got shorts on. Let's go. The first week of school, I actually had a student tell me, you have no respect for any of us. We don't respect you. We don't listen to you. We don't hear you. Nothing. Let's go, James. You got some catching up to do, man. Let's go. They're more comfortable now, five months in, to tell me about their personal life, what's going on, and allowing me to help them get better. Yeah, I I've seen it. That's work. That's work. Although I'm just about a decade older than most of these kids, these kids have seen a lot more in their 14, 15, 16 years of life than I have in 24. I'm from the Bronx, and I basically grew up there my whole life. From my house, I will walk to the 9 bus, and I'll usually wait there, take it to the 4 train, take it to 14th Street, and then I'll transfer it to the L train, transfer it to the G train, and then I'll get off at Bedford, and then I'll walk to school down the block. I didn't feel motivated. I gave up. I was like, oh, this sucks. I hated school. I wasn't really a fighter or anything, and people used to bully me. People were making fun of the way I look, um, stuff like that. <laughs> They'll call me ugly, um, because um, they'll call me stupid, stuff like that. They have no role model. They don't know who to look up to. They don't have anyone to send them in the right direction. For them to just come up to me and just tell me that they'll enjoy my class or that over the weekend they'll come like, Miss, I missed you this weekend. What'd you do? Like, you know? It's just, uh, it's just rewarding to see that I have an impact on their lives. This school made me stronger. My coaches made me stronger. When I was little, my mom passed away and stuff. So I was raised by my father. So my father raised me and my little brother. It makes me feel bad because I know all of my friends have both their parents still in their lives. 
I could talk to my girls about anything, like any problems or whatever. We're a team. We're here. We're sisters. I'm from uh, Fort Greene in Brooklyn. I like to read <laughs> fiction, nonfiction, biography, like whatever I really find interesting. I ended up transferring here because the teachers weren't really helpful, like the teachers here. When I get older, I wanted to become a game designer, make my own company, make some games, you know, build my own empire, I guess. Because of this, right? Mm -hmm. So why don't you raise your hand after they're done and say exactly that? Okay. What about it? They confide in me and are able to trust me with issues that they have told me they've never talked to anyone else about. A lot of the problem is no one necessarily asked them what they want to do five years from now. Ooh. Look, you got no move. Come on, right here. There you go. Oh, he lost it. You're going to drive to the hoop. You get your own rebound, pass it to the Most people, line. I think, would define a coach as someone who gets his or her team to win. And that's really not a priority for us at all. You're only as good as your team. If our kids can understand that through the lens of sports, then they will start to understand that those lessons apply to everything that we do in our lives. I just always feel motivated. I'm like, I gotta do this, I wanna be someone. I wanna get out of the city, I wanna see some other places. Germany, probably New Zealand too, yeah. If we can move this population, if academically our students can succeed because of this model, then we know that every student will be able to succeed with this model.